Hey guys, I'm Pat, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to fix your uh, broken scripts and how to, you know, uh, read errors and output and debug and things like that. Research your own solutions without having to, you know, ask people to fix all your scripts. So, the first example I wanted to make was a... Uh, a kind of important one. A lot of people have this problem, and it's also a good way to. Uh, if I can, you know. Type. So it's a good way to uh, give an example for reading an error. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, detect when a player joins the game, and when we they do, we're going to get their character. And we're just gonna uh, read their character die, I guess. That's my uh, script. So we'll pull out the output, very important thing. And you'll see we immediately get an error. It says intent to index no with humanoid, right? So what does that mean? Does that mean that humanoid is nil? Uh, it doesn't. So, if in case you don't know what nil means, uh, we can just break this down and try and read it like English, right? So it tells us the script that it happened in and where it is. So it says service script, service script. And then four, that's the line that the error is on. Also, if we just click on this, it'll immediately take us to the line where the error is and it'll highlight it for us like it's selected. And then it tells us the error, attempt to index nil with humanoid. So it's attempting to index something and it's attempting to index it for a humanoid, right? So it's checking something for a humanoid. But the thing it's checking is actually nil, which means that it's non-existent. So it cannot find the character for some reason. Even though, you know, when we play the game, we go into workspace and we can see our characters right here, right? Our character is right here. So why would it be giving us an error when our character is clearly right there? The thing you had to take into account when uh, you're making a game is the script. Uh, the scripts immediately run when the game loads, right? So the when the server is created, the scripts run, and when the server is created, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's already players in the game. And a lot of the time, actually a hundred percent of the time, the player will load before the character loads. And the character can be loaded many times because whenever the char uh, character, whenever the player dies, the character is destroyed and recreated. So you need to take into account that uh, sometimes things may not load immediately. Sometimes you know you had to wait for things to be loaded into the game. So one more thing I wanted to do is uh, go over wait for child. And now this necessarily, actually, yeah, we do actually need to go. So. First thing I'll show you to do is how to wait for a character to be added. So we can make a variable called a character, and what we can do is we can make it equal to player character. Now, obviously, this would give us uh, this would make character nil because a uh, character probably won't be loaded uh, when this runs. So we can do or. What or will do is it'll check you know this is nil, and if this is nil, then it'll do the thing after instead, right? That's kind of how nil. Or how or works. So we can do player that character added wait. And now the character added event, you know, actually returns the character. So all we're doing is we're yielding on this event. We're just waiting on this event. We're waiting till this event is triggered. And once it is, it will return the character, and we can store that inside our character variable. Now we have the character. So now theoretically, we could just do character that humanoid take damage 100 now when we run this what all right whatever so it did an error but uh a lot of the time uh you also have to wait for the humanoid to be loaded in as well because you know the care the children of the instance won't load like instantly 
but the thing in, to take into account is a child will always be loaded after the instant, uh, after the parent. So if a child is loaded, then the parent is loaded too. You can assume that. So when you're use when you're uh, checking for a humanoid, when you're getting the humanoid, usually you want to use wait for child because a lot of the time there's a chance that the humanoid might not be loaded yet uh, because the character dies a lot and you have to wait for the humanoid to uh, exist. And if the character dies, then you know humanoid's gonna be new. So what wait for child does is it really just says what it does what it says. It waits for the child to be added to the parent instance, right? So it waits for the child to be added to character. So it's waiting for a child called humanoid to be added to the character. Once it is, then it will continue on in the script, right? That's basically how that works. And something you want to take note is a uh, Uh, infinite yielding. This is a really common error that people get and they just don't know how to fix it's For some reason that didn't error. Oh, no, there it is All right, so it says infinite yield possible and this actually is technically not an error. This is actually a warning uh, Errors are in red warnings are in orange usually you uh, that can be changed in studio settings, but you know whatever you get what I mean so it's saying infinite yield possible. So what does yield mean? Uh, yield means like waiting in the script or pausing in the script, basically. And infinite means infinite wait. So it's pretty much saying that it's possible that this script could infinitely wait on this line right here because we're waiting for a child part. And now why would that be? Because we have a part in workspace. Uh, obviously, that's because, you know, I spelled part wrong. That was kind of on purpose, but... Basically, uh, a lot of the times that you get infinite yield like this, actually pretty much all the time, it's going to be because the child that you're waiting for is never actually added. So when something, when you get an error uh, warning like this in your output, you want to, you know, click play and wait until you get the error. Once you get the error, you know, you can go and explore and you can find the uh, parent, right? So workspace in this, uh, or in this example would be the parent. And then we can check the parent for a child that matches the name that we are looking for. And we can see, you know, there's no child on our workspace with a lowercase p at this part, right? We only got a capital P, so we can realize that, you know, our problem here is that we misspelled part, we're, we're pretty stupid. But yeah, so that's just a way, I'm just going over infinite yield, obviously is a pretty stupid example, but you get the point, hopefully. Another thing that's uh, pretty common, I don't really have an example for this, but uh, hopefully you can just picture it. Maybe I can make like a sh small example, but uh, basically it uh, has to do with data store service. So a lot of times me people make a... Uh, I don't remember how to use data source service, honestly. So a lot of the times people will uh, use it improperly. Uh, a lot of the times when people are start first starting with data source service, they will uh, start off by making multiple data saves. So what this does right here, I'm not sure a lot of people understand data store service, but it gets the data store called save one. So you can have multiple data stores in the game. So we could have another data store called uh, save two. And now we have these two data stores. And now once we try to uh, say save or load data to both of these at the same time, because say we want to save a uh, player's uh, level in one and then their XP in the other, uh, what will happen is we'll be sending multiple requests to Roblox's data store system or whatever, data store service, and it will be added to a queue and there's a possibility of your request not actually going through. So there's a possibility of the data not being loaded or not being saved properly because you're making too many requests basically. And most of the time, 
you really only need one data store for your entire game. So there really should be no reason for you to have multiple data stores because I guess a lot of people don't realize this, but you could save a table instead of like one value. You could save a table and inside a table, you can have pretty much as many values as you want inside that table. So that's something you got to keep in mind when you're using data store service. Definitely should learn how to use tables or dictionaries to save your data in a much more efficient way. And that will prevent you from getting warnings in the output saying like too many requests to the data store or something like that, which is a common problem people have when they initially start using a data store service. All right, so here's an example. I'm gonna go over uh, print debugging is basically uh, what it's called. So what we're doing is uh, whenever the player joins the game, we're checking to see if their name equals a certain name. And if it does, then we're printing that that player has joined the game. So whenever we click uh, play, you'll see that we didn't get any output in our output. Nothing was printed. So nothing actually happened in the script, but there's also no errors. So it doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't it work? Basically what this is called is a logical error. Usually when you can an error in the output or like a, a red underline, you know, that'd be called like a syntax error. Uh, but this would be called a logical error because uh, the problem with the script isn't uh, how you wrote the, isn't like the syntax, it's more of like the logic behind the script. So what is our problem? Uh, we're gonna have to try and figure it out. So we're gonna go ahead and print our player's name because we want to see uh, we want to see what our player's name is because we want to see if this if statement is running. Obviously, it's not because this print inside here isn't printing. So we know that it's not going inside this if statement, and we need to figure out why. So what we're going to do is we're going to print out the player name, and we're also going to print out the user. And this will tell us uh, the two conditions in the if statement, which would be required to uh, get inside, right? So we need to see what's wrong with these conditions and so why it's not getting passed here. So if we do that, we can see we get two different things in output, which is obviously our issue because in the script, we're checking to see if they're equal and they're not equal here. So all we got to do to fix this is obviously just add a Y here instead of an O. And... Now, uh, it should work, right? Ghost is run. And that kind of makes sense because we can see our two different things and we can compare them to see why our if statement is not working properly, right? So what we have here is a mouse click event function. Uh, and we're trying to detect after this part is clicked, we're trying to compare the player's distance to the part's distance. And if it's greater than or equal to 10, then we'll say uh, player is far away. So we run it. And this is actually something I've seen, like somebody kind of did this mistake, but uh, it's kind of a silly mistake, but it, I, it's just something I thought I could use an example. So you can see I'm clicking this part right now. You can probably hear me clicking. Uh, nothing's happening. So we're going to try and figure out what's going on here using prints to see this. So what we will do is actually another thing you can do is we can copy this entire thing here, this entire condition, and we can paste it into there. And we'll actually just print true or false. And we can also do this, we can print distance, the magnitude we're getting here. And once we uh, play it and we click this part, we can see we can get false, which is obvious because we're not getting a print inside this if statement. And we're also getting zero for our uh, distance, which doesn't make sense. How could the distance be zero? Obviously, the problem is that we're getting the distance between the same part. Like, the, both the positions are the same, so the distance, of course, will always be zero. So, in order to fix this, we just got to do get the humanoid reports to the position instead. And now, once we play this, uh, you can see now we're getting. Uh, distance between the part player or we're still getting an error uh i know what i did <laughs> i forgot to change the actual if statement can so we do that 
Now we click it, false. Player is far away now. You can see after the player is better than, uh, you know, our scope's working. Further than it's over the distance limit, so it's printing like it's supposed to, whatever. So, uh, that's how you use print to debug your scripts. I'm sure you probably learned print, but you had no idea how it could be useful. This is your example on how it could be useful. And, you know, the last uh, choice you have really would be to, uh, like, if you have a script and, you, you know, you debugged it, you don't have any errors, you have no idea what the problem is, uh, you can... Go on to Google and you can just search your problem. You may have to change your wording a few times, you know, mess around the words, be less, be more vague or be more specific, uh, depending on the results you're getting. And eventually, you know, you'll probably find a dev form post and in there, it's really easy to use dev form. You know, you just look and see, you just read through the uh, thread, see what people are saying, see what the initial problem was and see if the problem was close enough to your problem and see if it's something that you know you could get information out of on a way to solve your issue and then in the rare case that for some reason you can't find somebody with the same problem as you now you shouldn't expect people to always have the exact same issue as you but a lot of the time you'll find somebody with a similar issue and their solution will be similar to the solution you will need but in the case that you can't find that, then you can always uh, make your own post on the dev form, uh, being descriptive, you know, showing a video maybe, or telling people what you have tried to fix it, telling them what the issue is, what, how it's expected to be, how it's like supposed to work, and telling them how it's working currently. Uh, and then you can also join a server, like a, a Discord server, like hidden devs or row devs or something and paste your script into their script help channel or whatever and say script no worky and maybe they'll spoon feed you some code or just laugh at you you never know but hopefully you know eventually you'll find a solution if not maybe you can just go crying in the corner and rethink if you should be a script or not but that's pretty much all i got for this video hopefully it helped you fix your broken scripts and if it did uh, I'm glad I could help. If not, uh, I'm sorry, I guess. See ya.